Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's October 2nd, 2019, and today I thought I'd share with you a technique that we use for stratification of the seeds that need uh, a dormant period to go through during the winter months before those seeds germinate in the spring. And uh, the techniques that I'm using, I actually got from watching Akiva Silver's uh, YouTube videos, and that's from Twisted Tree Farm, so if you, and I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, Akiva has some really good solutions. He operates a very small permaculture nursery s system, and, uh, and it's, his information is very valuable. So we have, I've just gotten done harvesting some of our almonds, uh, uh, so harvesting and hauling the almond seeds from some of our, our almond trees, and I'll be posting a video about that, that topic. And Thea uh, recently uh, collected some uh, black walnuts from, uh, from an area where, her, where she works. And uh, unfortunately, the squirrels or the or the mice got to the uh, chestnuts. There was a few chestnuts that we gathered, but this is something that you could do. You may have someone who has a nut tree, uh, fr fruit, peaches, apricots, plums, whatever it may be. There there may be people that you know where you get some really delicious seeds, and I would want to, to want you to collect organic seeds if at all possible. Something that hasn't had pesticides. Some of the pesticides. Are systemic and they may be in the the seed itself. So uh, what are the techniques I use? Well after getting the shelled nut or set or the or the pit of a peach the the, the next thing that I need to do is use some holy buckets. Actually blessed by the Pope. No. <laughs> so I've got some uh, repurposed I think these were originally pickle uh, buckets, five gallon buckets. I got them from a friend in Syracuse. We did some bartering for some training and, and I got quite a few buckets from them. And these five gallon buckets, I went ahead and drilled multiple 5 16 inch holes. Now these buckets serve many different functions on the property. But during this time when we're doing stratification uh, of some of the nut trees and all, I'll use these buckets during the winter months, but they serve other functions uh, after after those nuts are harvested in the spring. But I went ahead and drilled multiple 5 16 holes all the way around the perimeter of it, right up to the brim and through the bottom. Uh, and I really do encourage you to repurpose, recycle uh, using the using buckets from restaurants or from somebody who's throwing away buckets. I think you could even use old sheetrock spackle buckets or uh, a whole variety of things. Do I, do I think it's absolutely essential uh, that they haven't had paint in them? No, just clean them right out and, and reuse it. And many food products, you could use those buckets. So these are the buckets I'm using. And the materials I'm using here on site are free to me, but you may choose to pick up sand to put inside of these buckets, which I think would be a really good option option. So the first thing I do is I, after having these buckets all set and having the, the seeds prepped, in other words, removing all of the material fr from the peach from the, sh from the pit itself, removing all of the hull from the almond uh, seed as well, whatever it may be, and the same thing with the uh, black walnuts. And I'll create a video showing how I'm hauling uh, these uh, these hulls or husks on the outer surface of these seeds inside. Um, but once I have these buckets, the first thing I do is because we get wood chips here, I put some wood chips in the very bottom of, of, the, of the bucket. Um, the wood chips have more of a tendency to start molding, but you could probably just use wood chips inside of th this bucket and put your seeds or nuts just in wood chips. If you have leaves that you're collecting, you could use, use that as well. I've had some seeds in the past start to get moldy uh, as a result, and I believe that's in intimate contact with the wood chips themselves or leaf mulch, that sort of material. But there's really nothing to lose if you do a whole bunch in there as well. I actually, when my, uh, some of the black walnuts, uh, as I was going through the dry pro drying process after the washing them, I could see some mold was starting to start on the surface, so I just used some uh, vinegar, uh, some white vinegar that you pick up in the store and just sprayed the outer surface of it. It killed that, let them dry out completely, and that's what I, what I did next. So 
I add wood chips uh, material to the base of it. Then I start adding sand on top of that. The sand tends to deter some of the mold growth going up from uh, the organic material there. Now, if I had more sand, my, my sand isn't clean, pure sand here that I'm digging up. So uh, it's got small rocks in it and all, and it's really wet because we had some rain last night. And uh, if I had mo just more sand, I'd just go ahead and put all the nuts in the sand. But I put uh, a, a few inches of sand in the base of this, tried to remove as many of the rocks as possible. Then I put the, uh, some compost, uh, some uh, just finished from our most recent large composting uh, series that, that we've done. Well, I didn't do a whole series, but we just finished another large composting uh, process. So I took some compost, put it into there, and then I took the dried seeds and pits of each one of the, uh, the products that we want to want to grow, and I put those in and I mixed it in with the compost. Then I went out back again and got a bucket of sand, with our stony sand, and filled up on top of it. So the wood chips are somewhat isolated from the, uh, from the pits, the seeds, but the compost, the mature, fairly mature compost, uh, is is intimately associated with these seeds. Do the seeds need compost? No, they don't need the nutrients. What we're trying to do is get the seeds in early spring, when the shells are splitting open, and we just may see the small little root uh, starting to head down lower, <laughs> gravitational forces towards the earth. And, we, and that's about the time we want to, want to uh, get those seeds out of there. And what I'll do is I'll make another video showing where we t take all those seeds and put them into some air pruning beds as well. So that'll be the process that we go through in the springtime. So we've got wood chips in the bottom, a layer of sand, compost that the, that the, uh, that the seeds are actually mixed in with, a little bit of sand on the top, and the next thing want to do is make sure we get a good lid on it. Uh, you may use hardware cloth or, or a piece of metal. As long as there's holes in the system so water doesn't saturate the area and, it, and it's not located in a place that's in a shallow where you have to worry about water getting in there and freezing over, over winter time. You want the bucket to drain real well but you want to keep the squirrels, the chipmunks, the mice out of these systems. So whatever it takes, hardware cloth or whatever materials to do that. I'm using a plastic lid on it, snapping it down real well. The next thing I want to do is on the handle, I want to make sure that I'm labeling. I want to make sure I'm labeling each one. And the system that works for us, although I don't always stick to this, are these small aluminum tags. And I'll put a link to this, uh, an Amazon link, in the description below. Now I've used permanent markers, I've used uh, the paint markers, None of them last in our environment here. They don't even last a full season. I lear I've learned that the hard way so many times. I hope that I've learned it permanently. What we use is just a pen that we don't worry about the ink in it and we just make an impression across this aluminum tag, punch a hole in it, and then I use a wire tie, a, pl a, a plastic wire tie, to attach the tag to the handle of the bucket so I know what's what. So. That's what we've got. Now the next thing is, it gets, so the next thing is, it gets so cold down here and our frost line is so, so deep. What we really want to do is, I'll dig down a, a small trench spot where I'm going to put all these buckets at an area that, that the water line is below, <laughs> below the, the level of the buckets, the base of the buckets. And then I'll mound up wood chips, mulch over the top of it. You could use straw, you could use old grass clippings, you could use leaves, whatever it would take. And put something down on top of it so that you don't have to worry about it. If those lids of the buckets don't seem secure enough, maybe taking some big rocks, putting them on it, or cement blocks, whatever you have, that sort of thing. So this system works pretty well. Akiva Silver uh, it was the first person. I know that... Uh, I think it's Sean from Edible Acres that also has a video on it. Both of the, their sites are really good uh, resources for information. So uh, I think I've covered everything and I guess Timmy's going to visit with me now. 
If you, have, if you thought this video was of value, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And by all means, folks, have a great day. Bye-bye now. Give me something else. Always got to steal the show.